Have a desire to receive the COVID-19 vaccine? If so, please contact the church office by calling 757-380-5327 or by sending an email to office at myfbcee.org. Join us every Tuesday in the month of May at 6.30 p.m. for our weekly corporate prayer call. Simply dial 339-209-6507. No access code is needed. The Youth Ministry of First Baptist Church East End presents Migrating Through a Pandemic, a discussion for Mental Health Awareness Month. This special Zoom session will feature a licensed professional counselor for an open dialogue about mental health. All are welcome to join this important conversation on Wednesday, May 19th at 6.30 p.m. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the month of May here at the Lighthouse. I am so excited to see all of you in virtual worship on this morning. To our family and friends that may be visiting with us, whether it's for the first time or whether you're a regular visitor, welcome to the Lighthouse. We're so glad to have you join us for worship this morning. If you would take a moment and look in the description box if you're on YouTube or look in the pinned comment section on Facebook and fill out that connect card, share your information with us so that we may stay connected. Listen, I'm excited about worship this morning and I know that the Lord has a word for you. But before we go into the sanctuary that we're already in, if you want to be a blessing to this ministry or if this ministry has been a blessing to you, there are several ways for you to give and those options are right here for you on the screen. Take advantage of those options at any time during this broadcast and I believe that God will have a blessing in store for you. Listen, I'm excited because during this month of May, we have some capable and anointed associate ministers that will be sharing the word with us. So I want you to pray for them. I want you to encourage them. I want you to give your amens and your preach on and your whatever you got in the comments as they bring forth the word of God. Let's go into the sanctuary. We're already here. Let's worship together. I'm looking forward to it. God bless you. Good morning, church, and welcome to our Sunday worship service here at First Baptist Church East End. We give glory and honor to God our Father, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to the Master Teacher himself, the precious Holy Spirit. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this, this new day, a day that we have never seen before but a day in which we know that you know everything that is going to take place. Father, we put our trust in you. And we're excited about what you're going to say to us today. Give us wisdom and insight into your holy word. And Father God, we thank you for all that you have done. 
We thank you for what you're doing right now. And we're excited about what you're going to do. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. We give honor to our executive minister, Pastor Jamar Jones, to the ministerial staff here at First Baptist Church East End, to our deacons, to our trustees, and to you, First Baptist Church family. I just want to take a few minutes to let you know, First Baptist, how thankful I am for the outpouring of love that you showed me during my time of hospitalization and recuperation. I mean, everything that you have done for me has just been simply a blessing, and I want to thank you. You know, sometimes, church, we don't know exactly why God does what he does, why he allows things to happen. And that was the case with me when the Lord spoke to me and said, get into the hospital, call your son to come and get you and to take you to the emergency room at Riverside Hospital. And I thought I was going there for one thing, but it was while I was there, he showed me that there is another reason why I have you here. For some of you, you know that I've never been in a hospital a day in my life. Wasn't even born in a hospital. I was delivered by a midwife. But God had me enter Riverside Hospital not because I had problems breathing, but because there was something else that he wanted me to do. And so everything that I experienced was a first time experience. The IVs in both arms, the, 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 the needles in, in my hands and in my wrists and the, the electrodes all over my body and uh, all of the, the, the tests that they put me through. Midway through my stay, all of that was getting to me. And the Lord spoke to me and let me know, I have you in my hands. I have you. And I want you to take your mind off of yourself. And I want you to focus on persons who have been in this hospital a long time before you came, who are going to be here long after you leave. And I want you to realize how bound they are, bound physically by the, 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 the wires and, 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 and the intravenous tubes and everything all over their bodies bound by the rules and regulations of the hospital itself. There are those that are bound mentally, thinking that they will never get out of here. There are those that are bound who are fearful that they may never get well. There are those that are bound financially, who are concerned about how am I going to pay for this hospital stay when I uh, get out of here. And then there are those who are bound by hopelessness. I want you to focus on everything that they are going through because from this moment on, I want you to pray, to intercede for people who are in hospitals, who are in nursing homes, who are in hospice, who focus on they're being bound by all of these different extremities. Because I want you to pray for them differently than you've ever prayed for them before. And the Lord spoke to me and said to me, I didn't have you enter a hospital when you were a child for a purpose. 
I did not have you enter the hospital as a sinner. I did not have you enter this hospital as a babe in Christ. I had you enter this hospital at age 67 as a maturing Christian because I knew at this time you'll understand what I want you to do. And so I glorify God and I give him thanks for our God is a God of purpose. He is the God of purpose. And the message that he has for me to give today is found in John chapter 8 and verse 36. And it reads, so if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Free indeed. In Matthew 24, verse 24, Jesus warns his disciples, false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, referring to the saints. These words appear to re refer to the events surrounding Jerusalem's destruction in 70 AD. But the deception Jesus has in view is part of an ongoing pattern. From the beginning, Satan has been deceiving God's people. He will continue to do so until the lawless one, Satan himself, is revealed with all power, signs, and lying wonders. John's vision of the millennium ends with a worldwide rampage of deception on Satan's part. Jesus warns us, of this deception. And Jesus' warning is therefore relevant to us today. You know, church, many people, and, 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 and there are many Christians who think they're free. They think they're free. Many Christians today feel and, and operate like they are free. They go about with the mindset that they are free to do whatever they desire in the name of Jesus. They think they're free to say whatever comes up out of their heart and through their lips. Or think the thing that they have done will add jewels to their crown because I am saved. Oh, how Satan easily deceives us. And oh, how we deceive ourselves. The word of God warns us of this possibly happening. But church... I'm here to encourage you today. Saints, in John 8, 36, it says to us, so if the Son sets you free, if the Son of God, Jesus, sets you free, you will be, you will be, not might be, you will be free indeed. So what is it that Christ has freed us from? Well, first, Christ has freed us from the bondage of sin. 2 Corinthians 3.17 tells us, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is 
freedom. In John 10.10, 10, we find Jesus saying, I have come that they might have life and have it to the fullest. And the Apostle Paul tells in Galatians 5, 1, that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Jesus has set us free from the bondage of sin. Secondly, the Lord has freed us from the penalty of sin. We find in Romans 6.23 these words. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God Hallelujah. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 58, we find these words. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, because of the victory through Jesus Christ, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Glory be to God. Jesus has freed us from the penalty of sin. Third, the Lord has freed us from the guilt and shame of sin. Have you ever experienced the feeling of guilt? Have you ever felt shame for things you have done in your past? Have you ever repented but felt like you need to repent again? Because you feel so bad that you want to make sure that God really forgave you? This is one of the biggest weapons of our enemy, Satan. Encouraging you to look back at the shameful moments of your past. When you do you can be overwhelmed by guilt, by shame, and by condemnation. This will ultimately strip your joy, rob your peace, and destroy your vitality. The good news, glory be to God, the good news is that we have been set free when we sincerely repented the first time. When we sincerely repented the first time, God forgave us. He removed that sin from us as far as the east is from the west. And he doesn't remember it anymore. He will never bring it up. He will never bring it up again. But how many times do we bring it up? God will never bring it up again. 
if we truly repented the first time. And neither should we bring it up. I want you to listen. Listen to Psalm 103 and believe it. Listen. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems you, who redeems you in your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed he made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and he's gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Can we say mercy? Or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And let me just stop right here for a second. As far as the east is from the west, has he removed our transgressions from us. Let me tell you something. God means what he says and he says what he means. He says as far as the east is from the west, he did not say as far as the north is from the south because if you stand north and start walking, you reach south. And if you stand south and start walking, you reach north. But if you stand east and you start walking, you will always go east. Think about it. If you're standing west, and you start walking, you will always be going west. As far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, those who reverence him, those who honor him, those who worship him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, 
you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Glory be to God. And what has Christ freed us to? If he's freed us from, then he has to free us to something. So what has Christ freed us to? Jesus has freed us so we can live. Jesus has freed us so we can live, which infers that we must be dead without him. So Jesus has freed us to live. Again, in John 10.10, 10, we find these words, I have come that you might have life, and have it to the full. Jesus says to us, listen church, I have given you my spirit and the freedom of my spirit is in the fruit of my spirit. The freedom to love, to have true joy, Freedom to experience the peace that I give. The freedom to forbear. To be kind to one another. To show goodness and faithfulness. Gentleness and self-control. As we are led by the Holy Spirit of God, this freedom that Christ gives through the fruit of his spirit, can no man, woman, boy, nor girl keep us from operating in. Because the word of God says, against such there is no law. You can't stop me from loving you. You can't stop me from being kind to you. You can't stop me from expressing the fruit of the Spirit to you. And finally, Jesus has freed us to serve. To serve. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, For we are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Jesus has set us free to be about our Father's business. Just as Jesus said in John 4.34, my meat is to do the will of the Father who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus has set us free to make John 4.34 our mandate. We are here to do the Father's business, to do his will. So if the Son if Jesus Christ himself sets you free, you are free indeed. Let us pray. Glory be to God. Father God in heaven, we thank you. That true freedom, real freedom, is in your son, Jesus Christ, whom you offered up in our place. We thank you, dear God, for the atonement. We thank you that you offered up your son 
the perfect and only sacrifice that could have been made. He who knew no sin became sin for us. And we thank you that freedom only comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father God in heaven, may your word saturate our souls, our minds, and our hearts. And may we live and be free in Christ Jesus. For we know that if Jesus sets us free, if the Son sets us free, we shall be free indeed. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that that word would settle in your spirit and in your heart and that God would allow it to grow in you as we continue to grow in Christ. If you want to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do is confess that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and the Bible says you are saved, you are born again. And if you have made that confession, my brother and my sister, today is the day that the love of Jesus Christ will enter your life and surround you. If you want to stay connected with us, we are on social media. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Check us out on the World Wide Web. Our phone number is there. Our email is there. We are here to serve you as best we can. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you or you, want to be a blessing to this ministry. There are several ways that you can give. The options are all there for you on the screen. And I pray that if you sow a seed into us, God would sow back into your life 100 fold. Thank you for worshiping with us. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here at the Lighthouse.